All right, so it is official. I'm going to be making a companion website to the YouTube channel. And I thought that I could do or show you guys some of the things that I do when I'm working on a website for a client. So I set up this very basic WordPress site. Obviously there's nothing in it. This is just a default theme. It is under construction, so don't expect there to be much content. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to design the theme and the templates and ins install all the plugins. However, I want to use Git for that. I don't want to do FTP just uploading and downloading files because at the end of the day, when something breaks, then you have to go and dig files through a backup as opposed to having full access to the Git history. So I set up this WordPress site with a HostGator. Now you don't need HostGator. You can set it up with any WordPress uh, hosting provider as long as they give you a cPanel access. Some managed WordPress solutions don't give you access to the terminal and that is what we're going to need. Now, when you have a WordPress site that gives you access to the cPanel, you can go up here and search for the terminal. And this terminal basically gives us access to the server. Now, if we type ls, we will see all the files and directories. What I love about this is that it shows hidden files by default. Hidden files usually have a dot at the very beginning of the file name. Now, our WordPress site is hosted in the public-html. So let's go there. And if we type ls, you can see that this is the very basic WordPress install. Now I have already set it up. I set up a git ignore and a git to keep tracking it, but we're gonna get rid of that because I want to show you how to do it from scratch. So we're going to delete git and we're going to remove the git ignore. Awesome. So once again, this is what you would see if you haven't set up git before. Um, and now all we need to do is type git init and then we'll create a directory where all of your git history is going to be tracked. Now that you created the git history, we need to create uh, nano is the editor. We need to create a git ignore file. A git ignore basically tells git, hey, don't keep track of this file. And that's where you're going to you're going to tell git all of the sensitive files that you don't want to be shared back and forth between GitHub and the server. So nano.gitignore. And in this file, we're going to add, hmm, let's add the WP config because it has all the information and the salt for your database. So we don't want to share that. WP config.php. We don't want to share any node modules files. Oh, uh, I have to do a dash. Actually, I think I have it listed. So if we go to my notes, I think I have the standard notes. Uh, because the good thing about a git ignore file is that you can tell it exactly what you want to ignore. So I have this pre-configured, the HT access, the CGI bin. So I'm just gonna copy this. and just paste it here. I'm going to delete what I already typed. Awesome. So now we're going to do control O enter and then control X. And if we type LS, nothing really has changed. Now the get ignore file is going to tell Git, Hey, don't keep track of the files that we added to this file. Now you need to sign up for a GitHub account. You can use GitLab. Um, you can also use, ah, what's the other one, Bitbucket. But we're gonna be using GitHub for this is the standard and it's free. So once you sign up, you're gonna be brought up to a dashboard like this. Okay, so it appears I forgot something very crucial and I didn't notice it until I was editing the video. So in order for our server to have access to our GitHub account, we need to create an SSH key. So the good thing is that cPanel gives you a GUI to create SSH keys. So if we go to SSH access, 
uh, and then manage SSH keys. Now these are the ones I already have, but the basic step is that we need to add the public SSH key from the server, add that one to GitHub, and then keep the private SSH key private so that we have access to our GitHub repository without having to log in or supply a password or email. Even uh, like GitHub already got rid of password authentication anyways. So this is a crucial step, but I'm sorry that I forgot, but I'm gonna edit it and I'm gonna add it to the middle of the video. So you need to go up here, uh, create or generate a new key. Um, you can give it a name, you can give it a password. It's not really necessary. I'm not gonna give it a password because then every time I need to push to the repo, it's gonna ask me for that password. We're just gonna type, uh, we're gonna go down here and just generate key. Awesome, so now it says key generation complete. If we go back to SSH keys, so SSH access, manage SSH keys, you're gonna have another SSH key here somewhere. So you have a public key and a private key. The private key, you don't, you don't really need it. Um, this stays private. You just need to copy the public key and add it to your GitHub. So we're gonna go to view or download. I'm gonna be changing these keys anyways, uh, since they're gonna be public. So if we copy this, then we go to GitHub, down here, go to settings. Then in settings, you go to SSH and GPG keys. These are all the devices that have access to my repo. All you need to do is go and click the green button for new SSH key. You're gonna give it a title like server and then tie, uh, paste the key here and then add SSH key. And that is how the server is able to communicate back and forth with the GitHub repo. Be brought up to a dashboard like this. We're gonna create a brand new repository. We're just gonna call it WordPress. Actually, we're gonna call it WordPress-CF for code fallacy. Uh, we're gonna give it a description, code, code fallacy, WP site. We're gonna make it private. We don't want people to be snooping. If you wanted to contribute to the open source community, you can make it public. Because we already have a bunch of stuff, we're not gonna initialize a readme or a ignore file or a license from here because that might cause issues later on. So we're going to create that repository. And this is a blank repository. GitHub is telling you, hey, if you have, if you want to add a repository from the command line, this is what you have to type. So if we go back to the server, we just need to do git status, and it will tell us all the on track files that we haven't been keeping track of. Okay, now we need to keep track of them, and we do that by typing git add, and then a period to select all of them. This could take a couple of seconds since servers in shared hosting providers, they're not very fast. Awesome, so it did finish. Now if we do git status again, these all these files are now being tracked and it's basically the entire site. Now we need to commit them, right? So we do git commit dash m to include a message and we're gonna say initial commit. This is basically our first and base commit. We click or we type enter or return. Now the git has been committed. Now we need to tell the server that this is going to be our new uh, repository. This is where we're gonna store everything. And the way we do that, we first have to check out to the main branch because GitHub is stupid and about a year ago, they switched from master to main. So this is just an additional step. It's kind of a hassle. So we're telling that, that our main branch is going to be main instead of master. 
we're going to add this origin. What we're doing here is that we're telling it, hey, this is going to be our origin point. And all right. And then we're going to push the code. The first time you push, you need to specify the origin, which branch you're pushing to. In this case, it's main. So git push dash u origin main. And it's pushing the code to GitHub. So if we go back to our repository and we refresh, we can now see all the files from the WordPress install in GitHub itself. Now that we have it in GitHub, we can clone it locally and reproduce the site locally. And I'm going to be showing you that in the next video.